Hey everyone, in this video I wanted to go over WordPress hooks. Now the word hook is just a blanket term that refers to places in your code where you can change what WordPress is doing by default. Now there are two types of hooks. Number one is actions, which allows you to run code when an event happens in WordPress. And number two is filters, which allows you to modify data before it is either sent to the database, displayed in the browser, and so on. And since this is a core concept of WordPress, we will be spending some extra time not only going over how to use existing hooks, but also how to create your own actions and your own filters. Let's get started with actions. Let's jump over to our functions.php file. When dealing with actions, you're typically going to use two functions, add action and do action. Add action is when you need to run code when something else is happening in WordPress. And do action is used when you're creating your own custom actions. So for right now, let's deal with add action. Now there is a list online of all the different actions that exist in WordPress core. One of those actions is called save post. And the first parameter inside of this add action function is the name of the action that you want to hook into. The second one is the function that you want to run when the first parameter happens. So we want to run something called log when saved. So every time that somebody saves a post in WordPress, this function is going to run. So we just need to set up what that function is. So function log when saved. And then so anything that we put inside of here will run when a post is saved. And sometimes actions will actually pass a parameter to your function as well. And in the case of save post, it will give us the post ID. So now we can pretty much do anything that we want to when that function is run. So I thought a great example of how this works might be, well, how about every time that we save a post in WordPress, we get the title of that post and then save it to a file. So I have created a file called postlog.txt. And what we wanna have happen is just it to write out something like this. Post one was just saved, post two, post three, etc. So in order to start that, we're gonna to need to get that file path. So post log is going to be at the style sheet directory slash post log dot txt. And then we're gonna create a message. This message is going to have the title of the post, get the title, post ID. So that's kind of what's cool about this is that action has given us the post ID to work with. So we can pass that in to get the title and get the title of the post that was just saved. Was just saved. Well, let's do an exclamation mark. And now we need to do some of the like writing of the file and all that. And I went ahead and I just made the snippet for it. So you don't have to watch all that. So it just, if the file exists, open it up and close right to it and then close the file. So let's see if this works. If we go over here to adding a new post and say, let's cross our fingers and hit publish. We should be able to go back and go to our post log. And you can see that we kind of got three lines here, which is we don't really want that. We just want it to come out once. So why did it happen three times? Well, the kind of tricky thing about this action is that it happens not only when you save a post or when you publish a post, but it also happens when a post has been revised. So when a post revision is created and when a draft has been created. So in order to keep that from happening, we're gonna write an if statement right here at the top. So if is a post revision with, then we'll pass that the post ID so it knows what we're talking about. And then if it's that, or if it is post autosave, 
and pass that the post ID as well. Then we just want to return. We just want it to do nothing. And that should give us a more clean log file. So let's take a look. Let's add a new file or a new post rather. Another test. Let's hit publish. And let's check our file again. Another test was just saved. Let's do another one for good measure. Another one for good measure. Publish. And another one for good measure was just saved. And now that that's looking good, I wanna move, move on to another scenario. So in this scenario, let's say that we have a page on our site and it's called super secret. And we don't want anybody who's not logged into WordPress to see this page. So let's take a look here. There is an action in WordPress called template redirect. Template redirect. And we wanna run a function called members only. So if we create that function called members only, We can now run something inside of here. Now the difference between this action and that action is this one actually doesn't send us anything. All it does is let, lets us know that WordPress is about to direct us to a template. So we can interject here and say, add some, add some logic. So we're gonna say if it's a page that we're looking at and it's super secret and the user is not logged in. So if both of those two things are true, we want to do a WP redirect and we want to send them to the home page and then kill the process. So if it's the page that we're talking about, if it's super secret and they're logged and not logged in, send them away. If not, they're fine to stay. So let's test this out. If we go to the page, it should be super secret. We are logged in so we can see it. But if I log out and then go to that, it will redirect us back to the home page. So now we've taken a look at two actions that come with WordPress right out of the box. Let's take a look into creating our very own custom action. So let's say for example, we wanted to log every time that somebody visited our super secret page and they weren't logged in. So that logic is happening right here. What we can do is we can use that function I was talking about earlier, do action. All we have to do is pass it a tag name and in this case user redirected. Now this could be anything you want. We are naming this ourselves right now. And then technically we can start using it. I mean, we can do add action user redirected and, you know, start our function. Well, if we wanted to take it one step further, we could actually pass arguments to this do action and receive them in our add action. Just like we were seeing up here when we were logging every time a post was saved. We were, we were receiving that post ID. And this is where you would send across that variable. So let's say for example, we wanted to log not only that it was accessed, but when it was accessed. So all you have to do is just pass in an additional parameter and this can be anything. And in this case, we're gonna give it the date. So it's gonna give us the day and time and all that and then we can pick that up inside of our add action. So let's see here, let's create our function. It's gonna be called log when accessed. And let's just create a function that's called exactly that. And since we passed in the date, we can now accept that here. And so we're gonna want this function to be pretty similar to the function that we had up here where we were saving the, the post titles. So let's just copy and paste that and just make a few modifications. 
So let's paste that. Now, instead of post log, we're gonna want this to be access log. And instead of it saying that the post title was just saved, let's just say that someone just tried to access our super secret page on, and let's concatenate in the date. So every time that somebody access that, accesses that page, or tries to anyway, we should write it to the access log. So let's give that a try. Let's go back to our homepage. We're not logged in. And let's try to go to super secret. Now it should redirect us back to the homepage. So that's still working. And let's go back to our access log. And looks like it worked. We got our message along with the date and time. So I hope you can start to see the power of actions. They really are one of the main reasons as to why WordPress is so extendable and powerful. And in the next video, we're going to be going over filters and how they make WordPress even more powerful and extendable. And like always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the vid video, click like and subscribe so I know to keep doing what I'm doing. Hey guys, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Kinsta. If you are looking for hosting, they are an awesome company that specializes in WordPress. Um, if you are on a, another hosting and you're looking to upgrade, definitely give these guys a look. They will even migrate your site for free, so you don't have to worry about transferring files and images and the database and all that kind of stuff. They will do it for you. If you're running a small blog or a WooCommerce store, they specialize in all that kind of stuff. So give them a look. The link is in the description, and if you click it and sign up, you'd be supporting me and the channel.